All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off with giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the hopefully elect. Coming at you with another quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And um, so I was just watching the Elder Ariala's video out of Dallas. And I believe all brothers should tune in to this lesson. All right. It was uh, beautiful through the spirit. Now, you got what you do have is you have a lot of Jake, you know, not understanding what this thing is about. OK, and even you do have some Jake that come into this thing, you know, uh, you know, without uh, without actually counting the cost. OK. Now, when you decided to, you know, uh, come to the camp you know, um, showing that you want to uh, be a part of the camp, you know, whether it's holding signs, reading precepts, that was a, a, a form of commitment to what? To doing the work. And it really is really a, a sign or a form of commitment when you cross over to the other side. Right? Now, when you go into this word commitment, it says action of officially co-signing to the custody of the state. Let's get to the point. It says meaning the pledging or engaging of oneself, a pledge, a promise and obligation. OK, so you made a, a pledge to what? To be a part of, you know, your fellow servants, the men of the Lord, the prophets, okay, to do what? To, to be a part of the ministry, you know? And there's many, uh, there's many parts of the body, you know, that work in unison together, as the scripture speak of, speaks about. But you have made that pledge to what? To be a part of the ministry. And what? It says an obligation. So first and foremost, what comes first? The truth. That's why, you know what? Let me get a few scriptures. Salakia. Let me get a few scriptures. Not be my... Disciple. So when you go to the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 26, it says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, this is not talking about hate, you know, the, you know, the term that they put on where it's hate, where you violently harm someone. Right. Or how or if you mistreat someone. No, this is just saying hate is mean to uh, de uh, to uh, detest. Right. Meaning to what? Love less. So, no, you're not going to put your father. You're not going to put your mother, your wife or your children. Your family, right, your brothers and sisters, even your own life over the truth. OK, because the truth is more important. The truth comes first. Now, yes, you still are going to be able to, you're still going to, you know, honor your father and your mother. Okay. You're still going to uh, love, uh, you still, you still should love your wife as Yahweh Shah loves the church. But that does not mean you, uh, you, you put the truth to the side for her. Or you put the truth to the side for your father and your mother. Your children. Jake need to come. Jake need to start uh, uh, balancing things out through the spirit. Yes, Jake needs to start balancing things out through the spirit, man. You know, because nothing should be coming in the way of this truth. Of your part in the ministry. Everyone has a role. 
And if you find your role, you exercise that role. Verse 27, and whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sit if not down first and count up the cause? Whether we have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after ye have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold, behold it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish it. You want to count the cost, man, before coming into this thing. You want to consider. That's why we. That's why when you're on the other side and we're we're doing uh we're breaking down, you know uh scriptures, you should be taking notes. You should be taking notes and going back home and looking at your notes. Or even, or if you're watching videos, however the case may work or may be, and say, "Hmm, do I want to go through this? Am I able to go through this? Am I ready for these different scenarios to come upon my life and deal with it, no matter how hard it be?" That's what it's talking about of counting the cause. Because yes, in this ministry, a lot of things do take place. A lot of things takes place. A lot of brothers have lost their families, wives that have left. Children that has, you know, disowned them because of, you know, their so their belief. Family that has tried to disown us because of our belief. All of a sudden, we become the black sheep. Sometimes Jake don't know how to deal with that. Of becoming the talk of your family. But see, right there, you're being persecuted for righteousness sake. You're being persecuted because you believe in the truth. Now, if you're this family person, you're, you're family oriented and not saying anything is wrong with it. You have people. I, I remember I, uh, this one dude a few years back. He said, "Uh, you know. My 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 family hated me, you know. My fam my family hated me. Yeah, that's because you you more than likely ex exposed them to the truth by your you know your your uh your your fervent spirit when you first come in and you start getting on everybody's case about you shouldn't. The Lord said don't eat pork or the Lord said don't eat crab or you know this and that, which we all have done these different things things first coming in because it was hot on our spirit, you know. But when you get more into this thing, you start to understand it. You start to, you start to, you know, uh, see of or or, or or come to the point and grow with and with growth in the spirit to say, you know what? Maybe I should not do this. Maybe I should not say this. Maybe I should not say that. Unless you know they came up to the count, you know, and, and started asking questions. That's that's different, you know. But other than that, being not family functions, rebuking Jake, that's not the wisest thing to do. You know, so uh, making this uh, uh, commitment, you know, before you make the commitment, I'm talking about you, Jake's on the other side. You want to count the cost. All right. <clears throat> so it goes into an obligation. I want to pull up another scripture real quick. And I'm going to be all over the place. So, Lord willing, bear with me. Let's go to. Uh, let's see. Teachers. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Many. I can't think of it. It's in Corinthians. Many. body <clears throat> okay so uh, so there's two of them so let's let's go to the book of Romans 
chapter 12. But let's start at, let's start at the top. Matter of fact, it says Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to the Most High, which is your reasonable service. You are bought with a price. You are bought with a price, okay? In your reasonable service, right? Is to what? Is to do the work. Now, what consists of doing the work? Reading, studying, helping, you know, helping a brother if you could. Going out to the highways and byways. Doing your lessons, doing your videos. That's all part of doing the work. That's all part of your reasonable service. Yes, and walking after the spirit. All these things tie into your reasonable service. They all tie in. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may, may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. The scripture says, um, use the world, but not abuse the world. Okay, so there's things of this world that we have to do. There's things in the world that we have to do. Okay, so we're just going to use the world. But we're not going to abuse ourselves in the midst of it. And a lot of times, Jake get caught up doing too much worldly shit. And the worldly things might not be wicked, but their time might be too much on the worldly things. And if you're putting all that before the truth, before your spiritual walk, you need to check yourself. For real. So now let's let's jump to a uh, uh, let's, let's continue. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as the Most High have dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in a Mashiach, and every one member and every one members of one another. Having then different gifts, di differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the pro pro proportion salakia, of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering or he that it teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissension, abhor which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly, affection one another to with brotherly love, and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, forever in spirit serving the Lord. Not slothful in business. Now, you have your spiritual business, which is doing the Lord's work. And then you got your carnal business, which is your worldly business, whereas you got to work to eat, to pay bills, to take care of your family. That's something you have to do. We get it, you know. But if you put that business, right, the business and the things of the world that you're doing over the Lord's business, I mean, that's just not wise to do. Like Elder Oriala mentioned, you know, uh, like getting promoted with different jobs, you know, or just, you know, like trying to find another job. You try to find things around, you know, where it's uh, kind of a, a situation where it's beneficial to you but also for the ministry. You're not going to pick nothing where it just cuts out uh, the, your, your, available, your, your availability for the ministry. Like, that's just, that is not wise at all. But you got brothers that do that. I mean, I myself, you know, a couple gigs, I could have got better gigs. But when it started talking about how I, basically I couldn't uh, do it, uh, I wasn't able to, you know, 
fit it in with my availability for the ministry. I said, the hell with that gig. The Lord will provide. That was my mindset. And I had faith in that and I trusted in that. And the Lord is still providing. Even though how hard it is, the Lord is still providing. Okay? But you're, you're not going to pick nothing. Let's just say, example, uh, you got a job where six days, seven a week. So your availability of camp is just limited to none. Like, come on, dude. Really? Because like the elder Ariella said, you know, and, uh, and other brothers say, the Lord can take all these things from you at any given time. Any given time. Your children, your woman, your job, all these different things that we cleave into, the Lord can take that if he chose to. All these things here is temporal, man. You want to keep that in your mind. So it says, verse 11, not slothful in business, fervor in spirit, serving the Lord. Okay. And like I said, all, a lot of th things tie into serving the Lord. But once you make that commitment, the truth comes your first priority. It becomes an obligation to you. I want to get a preset real fast. Um, this is it. So this is the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 57. It says, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee with, with, whithsoever thou goest. And Yahweh Shah said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man have, have not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. And Yahweh Shah said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of the most high. You got a bigger agenda on your plate that you need to do. Let the dead, let these people that are spiritually dead, bury the dead. You got another task at hand. This, this is your position. This is what I need you to do. But go thou and preach the kingdom of the most high. But a lot of you people are putting things before going out there and doing the work. A lot of you, a lot of you people make a lot of fucking excuses, man. To why you can't do your part in the ministry. Grow up. Gird up thy loins like a man. Forsake what needs to be forsaken. Or put less time or quit giving much attention to things that is not profitable. Verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell which are at my house. And Yahweh shall said unto him. No man having put his hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of the most high. You put your hand in doing the work and now you starting to look back. You ain't fit, man. You ain't fit. So let's get out of this one. Matter of fact, let's I want to pull this up and I actually got it in a commentary from David Guzik. All right. So it says and we're just going to get to the point. <clears throat> So it says, no one having his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the most high. Yahweh Shah stressed to this man, the commitment, the what? The commitment necessary to follow him. One must have similar determination as a farmer plowing a field who must do it with all his strength and always looking forward. In plowing a field in that day, a farmer kept the road straight by focusing on an object in front. And in the distance, such as a tree, if the farmer started to plow and kept looking behind, he will never make the straight roads and do a good job plowing. And following Yahweh Shai, we are to keep our, our, our eyes on Yahweh Shai and never take our eyes off him. No plowman ever plowed a straight furrow looking back over his shoulder. Plowmen also do something else of great importance. They hold on. 
a plowman who lets go of his plowman. Uh, it, hold on, a plowman who lets go is no plowman at all. Plowmen are usually a learned, usually learned persons, nor are they often poets in disguise. But there is one virtue they possess preeminently, and that is the virtue of quietly holding to it. More than anyone else, Yahweh lived this. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. So that's that's pretty much the point on that. Okay, so let's get out of this. We don't need that anymore. So going back to the Romans chapter 12, it says, verse 11 again, not slothful in business, forever in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing the, necess the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Okay, a be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but but can but can cond but condescend to men to of low estate. Be not wise in your own deceits or conceits. Salakia. Okay, so the other one I'm gonna get. I believe it's what is it? First Corinthians fourteen. Is that it? <clears throat> this one's going into the body as well. Let's see if I can pull it right back up. First Corinthians 12. Okay, let's we'll just pull it right here. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, For as the, as the body is one and have many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is a Mashiach. And I want to jump to verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the he where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But the but now have the Most High set the members, every one of them, in the body as it have pleased them or pleased him. Salakia, reading too fast, as it has pleased him. So the Lord has given everyone their position as it has pleased them. So if you are a teacher, then you're a teacher. OK, if you're, if you're a teacher, you're a prophet. That's what you are. If you're a helper, that's what you are. OK. And wherever the Lord may fit you of being a member of the body, but you're a member of the body, your position is not diminished. So don't look at it as, oh, I'm just I'm just holding camp signs. Right. Or I'm just a speaker. Or a, a reader, you know. Come on, man. Like, don't try to diminish your position. Oh, I'm just this. So, you know, I, I don't got to do too much work. Are you kidding me? Like, bro. And I'm just generally speaking right now. Jake need Jake need to need to get on top of what they need to get on top of, man. For real. Because if you don't want to be a part of this thing, just leave. Just leave. You want to continue to play games? Be lukewarm? Just dip. Go enjoy your time in the world right now while it's still up and running. Why play games? This thing is serious, man. Verse 20, but now are they many members yet but one body in the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of thee. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And this is why we do exhortation videos through the spirit for brothers to think that, you know, they role is not important. The Lord gave you a position which pleased him. Now exercise that position to the best of your ability. 
And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our comely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but the most have tempered the body together, have given more abundant honor to that which, that part which lacked, that there shall be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Mashiach and members in particular. Okay. And there's different, uh, you know, positions of the body. Okay. But everyone has their role, has their role. And I'll, uh, for the lack of time, I'll, I'll get to this, uh, some other time. So yeah, the, the point really, <clears throat> like I was saying, uh, you know, Jake got to get it together, man. You know, we all got to, uh, upgrade and level up through the spirit and, and examine ourselves, whether we be, we have the faith. Okay. So, I mean, I was just, you know, uh, an exhortation video to the spirit. Lord willing, hope it was edifying, you know, till the next time I want to say shalom.